fix this because I forgot some of the letters don't show up. That's so stupid. It's the dumbest thing ever. Alright, that works. Start at the minute mark. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the allegedly award-nominated, honorably mentioned, now viewable on YouTube, and both of the boys in studio episode of the Outside the Box podcast, part of the Underground Sports Philadelphia Podcast Network. It's KB and DJ in Underground Studios for the second time, and uh, when we pulled up to the crib, I told DJ it felt like it had been a week since he had been in studio and also 10 years <laughs> since you've been in studio but you're here we had a safe flight in and i'm sure it was much better than the last flight you took before you were here <laughs> a thousand times better a thousand times better <laughs> awful we're getting ready for pll albany weekend we've got game one of the nll finals to get into whole bunch of roster cuts we'll talk about. Um, but before we get started, make sure you guys are following us on the socials at OTB Laxpod on Twitter and on Instagram. Follow me on Twitter at KBIZZL311. Follow DJ at SCS underscore next great. Check out the website undergroundsportsphiladelphia.com because I'm sure we're going to have post-game recaps all weekend long on the website as well as subscribing to the podcast feed apple podcast spotify wherever you get your podcast we are there leave those five star ratings and reviews it helps more people find the show helps more people get on board with otb nation uh and of course subscribe to the underground sports philadelphia youtube channel hit the like button click the bell icon so you don't miss a single episode of otp or your other favorite underground sports philadelphia shows Big thank you to our sponsors who make this show happen. Tomahawk Shades, the best small batch eyewear in the game. DJ, we have an update on the Tomahawk Shades order? No. <laughs> Guys, no. Tomahawk Shades, what are we doing? Uh, just wild. Spl I'm blaming the supply chain. Yeah, that's That's, <laughs> that's what I'm blaming it on. They haven't even put my order together. That's insane. <laughs> it literally doesn't exist. Granted, DJ than... ordered the entire store, but... <laughs> Yeah, that's beyond. Because when you go to point. check out, you use promo code USP, you get 25% off your entire order at TomahawkShades.com. Kenwood Beer, the official beer of the underground. Go to KenwoodBeer.com and use the Kenny tracker to see who's got Kenwood Beer on tap in the Philadelphia area. Got to be 21 or older to do so. And, of course, please drink responsibly. And the boys over at Bino Board, DJ got a first glimpse at the boards that we're going to have this weekend up in Albany. Uh, you guys can go to BinoBoard.com and use our code BinoUSP to get 10% off your order from the homies over at Bino. PLL season's back, Deej. Dude, it's back. Couldn't be happy. We are back. Um, another PLL season getting ready to kick off. We've been covering it every single year. The wild part is it is uh, it's anniversary weekend of a lot of fucking things <laughs> that have happened to us over the last year. Uh, luckily we're not going to Boston <laughs> this weekend <laughs> because that would be a nightmare and a half. <laughs> Just wouldn't go. Uh, I was on my way to pick you up from the airport and I hit a bump in the road. It was drizzling. I said, oh shit, here we go again. <laughs> Die. Oh my God. But it is, uh. First things first, obviously. We always talk NLL first during the NLL season. It's game one of the finals. The boys came through. I was just a couple years early, everybody. Just to let you know, I posted the screenshot. I predict the Colorado Mammoth to go to the NLL finals just a couple years early. We were still in the building process. But the Mammoth are going to the finals. They beat the Seals uh, to advance to the finals for the first time in 16 years. 
uh, to take on the Buffalo Bandits, which should be an unbelievable NLL final series. Um, don't know if we'll see Ryan Lee, unfortunately, but you know, Colorado proved that they could beat a San Diego team with a high powered offense. And, you know, going into this year, we thought San Diego's offense was the West coast version of, of Buffalo. Like they were going to put up goals. They were going to score and Colorado was able to, to beat them. Dylan Ward's playing out of his mind. I'm very excited for this matchup. Yeah, I mean, I think it's really going to come down to um, Max Adler, as crazy as it yeah. sounds, being, you know, this is his first, you know, NLL action, but being thrown into the fire like this, like it's going to come down to possession. Like We know Matt Vince and Dylan Ward are going to come out and, and ball out. We know the offenses are going to do their thing. Defense, they're going to do their best to stop. But at that point, it comes down to who has the ball more. Yeah. And if you're winning faceoffs in critical moments, you're going to have the ball. So, like – Max Adler, this is your time to step up. Like, do what you did for chaos and turn around and do it for the Bandits again. And Colorado's transition entire unit has been on fire this point. Like, Joey Capito scored arguably greatest goal of all time. <laughs> no. <laughs> like, I saw that and I, I My lost. jaw like, dropped. I couldn't even react to it. Like, I didn't say anything in Discord. Didn't I say almost threw my Twitter. phone. Like, I was blown away. I'm glad my phone wasn't in my hand. I probably would. I literally would have thrown it. I said, like, huh? <laughs> what is that? That's literal sorcery. <laughs> like, never before seen. Jelly ever. Capito officially practices the dark arts. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I need Lyle Thompson to be the defense of the dark arts teacher <laughs> and to do some crazy move that defies that, like ASAP. That goal is a top five goal I think we will ever see in our lifetime in either form of lacrosse. Yes. Just ridiculous. Yes. I don't think I've seen a goal. I have not seen a goal better than that yet in my lifetime. That might be our... We might do a top five. Top five goals. (laughs) I have two off the top of my head (laughs) in my life of watching and covering. It's that and Rables around the world in the All-Star game. (laughs) So glad I have that 2019 tie-dye All-Star jersey. That thing is fire. That goal lives rent-free in my head. For all the right reasons. Ridiculous. Who did he get that pass from? Because I believe the pass Will was Manny? BTB. I think it was Will. Could be wrong. So don't criticize me if don't I'm wrong. Quote, don't quote on that. But I do think he got a BTB pass. Yeah, he definitely that. did. And then it was just like, I said, huh? Like, did, did we really uh, see what? that? <laughs> Dudes are nuts out there, man. Insane. That reminds me of, I don't know if you've seen the uh, like fifth grade tape that's going around on Twitter right now. No. Of the kid who just totally grant a met to it. I mean, oh, my God. They're, they're man up, uh, cross field pass, skip pass, all the way through. I mean, goes through three or four sticks, but it was a total sidearm. I don't know if it was more Tom Schreiber or Grant a met, but it was and I was like, these kids are in the fifth grade? It's insane. Like, I could barely dribble between my legs with a basketball in fifth grade. And I've been playing since I was three years old. Like, <laughs> that that's is nuts. Like, to think about where the skill level of this sport is going, mm-hmm. is it's unreal. Like, the, when these kids get to high school, I can't even imagine the things they're going to do in high school, let alone college and possibly the pros. Like, they're going to be doing stuff like Anthony Rendon did last month where he hit a home run left-handed. They're just going to switch hands. Unreal. They're going to be scoring with their teeth. Just like horses. <laughs> like, oh, like and all like the falling goals. And like, like one of my kids is a freshman. Hit a, the, Someone's going to run on their hands. <laughs> and have the stick between their, their feet. feet. So what on chaos has to do it, right? That is the most like scorpion like thing yeah. you can do on a lacrosse field. Like it, it's got to be someone on chaos. Man, who would though? Ian. Yeah. <laughs> See his mom's tattoo. No. His mom got a championship tattoo before he did. No way. Yeah. Why is their entire family like just sick? Speaking of chaos, real quick too, before we continue with uh, the NLL final, is Curtis Dixon just not playing this year? I don't think so. I didn't see him on the roster. That's such a bummer. Didn't report to training camp. Might be doing ML, uh, uh, MSL. 
Maybe. That's really the only thing I can think of Man. why he wouldn't be playing. That sucks. Because he didn't play last year either, right? He was hurt last year, so he didn't play. So I thought he would have came back. So my yeah. only guess is... Because he played in the bubble, just like Jesse King did. Man, that sucks. My only guess is MSL, because, like, I mean, none of the guys are really playing MSL this year. None of the PLL guys are all playing PLL. Yeah. Damn. That's such a bummer. He's so good. Yeah. And his celebrations are... Top notch. Elite. Top notch. Does not... Almost doesn't get better. <laughs> LFG. <laughs> There's no way she didn't ask AT for advice. Tell me you saw did. Joe Keegan's meme he made today. No. About AT being mic'd up in practice again. Did you see him call? Did you see AT call out that play, though? Did you see AT's son called him? Mid practice? No, I didn't. Say that. But yeah, I did. James Towers called him. It's his phone rang. Andy Towers said, "What's up? We're in the middle of a scrimmage." <laughs> so Keeks. <laughs> <laughs> said when James Towers calls Andy Towers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, he, he was like talking with RJ, and, and AT goes, "This is gonna be this, this, and <laughs> call it as I see it." <laughs> I can't wait to get hit in the chest this weekend, by the oh way. My God. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when Doctor Strange, like, astral punches. Get back to a different time zone. <laughs> He's going to send me back to, to, to Chicago. <laughs> by the way, <laughs> I'm sitting in the airport getting ready to board. Kyle wakes up <laughs> from a nap. Totally disoriented. Seven thirty-five Eastern Standard Time is the time. First off, I woke up and it was like, "Oh shit!" And then I was like, "Oh wait, I'm good. Okay." <laughs> it's seven thirty-five Eastern Standard Time. I'm in Chicago, which is Central Standard Time. Which I totally forget that Chicago is all like Chicago being Central Time. It seems like a myth. It, it almost doesn't make sense. No, it literally almost doesn't make sense. And I. Looking at my phone, it says 6.35, and I go, oh, yeah, like, going to take off at 7.05. And he goes, what? <laughs> it's 7.35. Blast from the past? Did you not have service? <laughs> no. I, I had That's service. what my brain was like. <laughs> Did this text get not sent, not, like, not get sent through because the Wi-Fi at Chicago's airport was that bad? No, actually, actually, ORD, O'Hare. Has phenomenal. Might have to send Wi-Fi. Stephen McAvoy there to record getting the hole every week. <laughs> like I mean, I recorded or I downloaded six episodes <sighs> of All American in twenty minutes. Jeez, while waiting for my flight because I forgot to download stuff for the past week. That's clutch. <laughs> but like, yeah, like I mean, the Wi-Fi was great, but I was just, I was just like, yeah, it's six thirty-five, and I'm leaving in half an hour at seven. And he's like, no, you're not. <laughs> Like, dog, like, I don't have the brain that AT has. Like, no. dude, I'll tell you that, that that's a smart man. Yeah, you'll have to go back and watch that clip of it was the they put it out earlier today, the training camp vlog, and it was a scrimmage, and he's like, it's gonna be this, this, and this, but it's gonna end with a a goal from this person, and he's like talking it through. He's like, boom, 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 finish, and I was like, how his do you, quote how do you know of that? you play well, we win. <laughs> You don't. That's when you end up in the fucking player pool. What a quote. What a quote. And we always seem to know who's going to the player pool before All they get the time. There. Well, except a couple this week, which we'll get into later yeah, in the show. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but the NLL Finals, game one this weekend. We're still trying to figure out where we're going to be trying to watch it, hopefully. Uh, the place we go to has ESPN+, Plus because I think that's what it's being broadcast on. Um I mean, or they can just have Wi-Fi. True. We'll uh, pop that thing on our phone real quick. Yeah, we got laptops tomorrow. <laughs> yes. We don't need no phone. <laughs> we need big screens. Yes. We need projectors. Surround sound. Do you think 
a restaurant would get upset if you shut up with a projector and put a game the Buffalo on the wall. Wild Wings here has like two projector TV screens. Yes. It's great. But just imagine like showing up to a restaurant on your own and be like, hey, yeah, I'm going to eat here and like pay y'all and stuff, but like I'm going to just play the game right here on my, on my projector. <laughs> Is that all right? Can like, y'all switch the, the TV input real quick? I got to drop in. <laughs> hey, do y'all got an extension cord? Tomato Town or? calling my name. <laughs> Tomato Town. We're still trying to figure Buffalo Wild Wings might be the spot. No free ads. There is a Mountain Dew review there. Still trying to figure it out, though. Um, but we will be somewhere to watch that in all finals. Uh, game one, one way or another. That is not our hotel room. No. <laughs> Although we did get that early check-in, which is nice. In our hotel room, it's very close to the <laughs> University of Albany. <laughs> yes. Just even better. Can't beat it. Can't beat walking distance. Ah, uh, it's the best. Uh, Colorado and Buffalo, though. Um, it's gonna be one hell of an offensive matchup. Like the postseason this year, Colorado scoring more goals per game. Bandits are allowing less than Colorado is, but it's still you know only a goal and a half difference. The PK percentage though is the interesting part here. Buffalo's penalty kills at 75%, and Colorado's penalty kills at 16.67%. That, to me, stands out as a, here's a series swinging stat. Yeah, that's a huge swinging stat. I mean, if you can't kill penalties against Buffalo, you're not going you're to win. You're fucked. Because, I mean, we've talked about it a thousand and one times. Like, they have, like, eight you know, synonymous offensive options, you know, granted they're split up like four and four between left and right, but to have eight guys you can swap through on your power play. And if you can't defend that, you're going to have a very long night. And they also have a guy named Steve Priolo who can run down the floor and score from their defense. Priolo is low key dark horse for defense player of the year. Yeah. Like he's had a phenomenal season. Like he's, you can say he's a big part of the reason why Buffalo is as successful as they are. 100%. Without without Steve Priolo, I think that defense is very different. Oh, definitely. You know, I think he's playing that that role in that position we thought um, Brock Sorensen would play mm-hmm. for the Wings. Like, he's that. And he's been that yeah. for years for yeah. Buffalo, which is. He's he's kind of taken that, that general role and, yeah. and, and plays it very well, almost to the tune of Brody Merrill. Like, yeah, very very good. I think the and you know the one the other knock on Colorado is not having Ryan Lee, but we've seen them overcome that. Connor Robinson's been fantastic for them. Eli McLaughlin has been fantastic. Eli had twenty six points in three games in the Western Conference Finals. Twenty six points in three games. Let that sink into your brains. That's Stupid. He almost had a sock, tr- sock trick in game three without trying. He had 14 goals and 12 assists, I think, was the the breakdown. That's dumb that in three games. Unreal. And, it's, and we're not talking against, like, a slouch defense. No. This is, you know, Eli Salama, Patrick Shume, Brody Merrill, and you still got to shoot on Frank, Frank Skiggs. Like, <sighs> he did this against a very talented, very, very good defense, and he made them look like – Nothing like chopped liver. Like Insane. He's, he's like, oh, I'm just gonna do this, this, and this, and then score, and you're not gonna be able to do anything about it. Like, bananas, bananas. Like looking back at that Western Conference Finals, he was the best player on the floor every single time he's yeah. There. And it, it was like him and Dane Doby. And that's crazy to say that he was the best when you have Dane Doby out there, Westberg, Austin, Austin Stotts, Stotts playing the way that he played, Zed Williams, like. It, Dylan Ward, Frank Skiggs are in net. And that's the best guy on the Capito, field. Capito. Like, every single time on the floor, 51 in red slash white, black, whatever jersey they want to wear, was the best player. Can they please wear the blackout jerseys one of these matchups? That would be so sweet. There's only one for them to wear it. It would be so sweet. Honestly, that's got to be at home in the Loud House. And yeah. could you imagine if they win game one on the road and then wear the black jerseys for the possible series clincher at home? I need it. No way <laughs> they, they don't. No way they don't sweep and win the NLL finals. 
they wear the black jerseys at home with a 1-0 lead, they sweep and win. Now, we have a, we have a big predicament here, too. Because, obviously, we have our picks. And we'll have our pick segment a little bit. But we obviously have a bunch of people that we're fans of on both of these teams. And we have a lot of ties to both of these squads. We obviously <laughs> hung out with most of this Bandits roster when they won a championship in September with Chaos. Um, but Colorado, Dylan Ward, friend of the program, Colorado's Twitter account, follows us, interacts with our tweets. They're an OG follow of the NLL teams that followed us. Where do we let our loyalties lie in this series? <laughs> Who do we want to see with the hardware and a trophy in the trophy case? I'm so torn. If we want to be honest here, we could technically break OTB into two separate sections. <sighs> because we aren't really doing any wrong rooting against the Buffalo guys. Right. If we turn around and root for them when they put on a Chaos jersey. Right. But we are kind of doing a disservice to not root for Colorado, who's been with us since day one. Very true. There's no real disservice to not root for Buffalo, but there is a big disservice to not root for Colorado. Yes. And it's one of those things where it's like, they uh, not a lot of guys from Colorado have been on the show or have interacted with us outside of Dylan Ward. But... Their team's fucking cool. Like, they have so many cool, fun guys. Like, Connor Robinson is so fucking cool. I want his nickname of the Mad Hatter to stick so bad. That no, motherfucker no scores hat tricks like no other. Yeah, left and right. Left and right. And three, and then that's it. Colorado, like... He, he's, like, worse than Ryan Brown. Because Ryan <laughs> Brown is, like, one or five or none. And Eli McLaughlin... Like, or Connor Robinson is three. Three or more. <laughs> <laughs> three or more. That's it. You get you get zero, you get three, or you get a whole bunch more. It's it's just bananas to think like if he steps out on the field, it's like he scores one, you know he's scoring two. Patrick's coming like ten minutes you later. You know he's scoring two more. It, it, like just like we said with Ryan Brown. Oh, there's the first. Oh, there's four more coming. He's got five of them coming. You let him score one, you just messed up. Same thing with Connor Robinson. You let him score one. Not only does Colorado win most of the time, but two He's got a hat trick coming up in a few yeah. minutes. Like, it's nuts. And Buffalo wise, you know, Dane, friend of the program, doesn't follow us on Twitter though. Can we fix that, Dane? Please. Um, Chase Frazier is obviously a homie for life, friend of the program. Um, Tahoka, future guest eventually, a homie for life. And you know, we hung out with with the boys when they won a title and like watching them win a title it's very very fun and you, we know buffalo as a city would go nuclear if any team won a title oh yeah it would be unreal especially after what they've been through in the recent weeks <sighs> like that's honestly exactly what the community needs but you you know you bring up that uh championship hangout that we had another reason why it's not really had to go against Buffalo is none of those guys really initiated us into that chaos group. That's true. It was Jack Rowlett that really gave us that extended extended hand. And so then like, it was Jack, Jared, Blaze, and Austin Cott. Yeah. Yeah. And that, Ian. Yeah. And you well, know, Ian. Ian is like the one guy we get. It's kind of like <sighs> It's kind of like. Uh, is when... this a situation where we just hope both teams have fun? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> it's kind of like when when the Riptide play Wings. I want the Riptide to win every single time, but I want Trevor Baptiste to have the best game of his life. I want Blaze to have the best game of his life, but like I also want the Riptide to win every single time. As much as I want Colorado to win. I want Ian and the rest of the bandit guys to have the time of their lives Man. and ball out. Like I literally this is hard. This is so tough. Like if San Diego would have won definitively would have been hoping for Eli Gobrecht to have the time of his life cuz that's the boy. 
and Austin starts to have the time of his life because it's the first guest in show history. But I would have been wholeheartedly rooting for the Bandits because there's also both of those teams don't follow us. And Buffalo, you could you could increase your odds if you hit the follow button. You're got, one of four. Got some other odds you can increase. One of four. Got some other odds you can increase if you follow. Just saying. <laughs> Just saying. Those odds are still up for grabs. Like, I'm pretty sure Colorado is one of the first, like, four teams that followed us. It was the Wings, because obviously we were media credentials with them. Calgary, I want to say, was in there. Saskatchewan was in there. And then Colorado. It was a lot of the West Coast teams. That came through first. New England, rest in peace. I'm sad that Twitter account got deleted because there was so many fun tweets. But back and forth. Dude, doesn't New England's like membership just slide over to Albany? Like isn't No, they created a brand new account. <laughs> so they're did not like the New England Black Wolves account just like was deleted. I was so pissed. So, so so with that deleted comes the deletion of <sighs> being a part of the OTB crew as well. Man. Well, I mean, at least Albany follows us. Yes. Yes, they do. I wonder if I can still search. No. It ain't going to come up. The handle. Oh, yeah, it's still there. It just doesn't show up as like a, an account you can like click on. That's That's awful. But that sucks. What's the point in doing that? Made no sense to me. It's not like Black Wolves is trending on Twitter or anything. Like, newsflash, it's not. It's that is a newsflash for anybody. <laughs> like, <laughs> it sucks because that was the first like Twitter banter that really. Shout out Tyler Bros. Just man, should we just get into our uh, our pick segment of the week? Brought to you by the homies over at Pickup. One of two this week. Uh, you guys can go to playpickup.com, start playing the hottest headlines in sports, rack up points on your fan profiles, cash them in for prizes on the pickup marketplace, playpickup.com. Our NLL Finals Game 1 pick of the week. DJ, the Bandits, hosting the Mammoth, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time in a fully loaded day of lacrosse. Who you got? This is like this is also very interesting for our pick segment for the NLL season because if this series goes three and I go three and zero, oh, you go zero oh and three, we tie for the season. Which then, how the fuck do we determine a tiebreaker? <laughs> I, I we'll figure that out if we get to a game three. I don't think we're going to have to worry about that. Not because I think some team is going to sweep, but I think I'm smart enough to at least get one of these games right. <laughs> Maybe not. Cause I've only gotten one postseason go back, game right. Go back to your conference finals. I've gotten like, whoa, I've got, I think I've gotten two postseason <laughs> games right. <laughs> the entire postseason. Oh. So I'm not going to go out on a limb and say it like that. But um, this first game is extremely tough. Uh, Honestly, for most of the reasons we just named. Um, but the toughest thing for me is really that idea that if Colorado were to somehow go into bandit land and pull one off, their chances of sweeping and winning this series go through the roof. Oh, yeah. Through the roof. And it's like that that's what makes it hard. Is And even if they don't sweep, we just saw what they did in the Western Conference Finals where they lost at home but then found that extra oomph on the road again and, and one in three. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, but I think being at home in the playoffs, mentioning, you know, what happened with the community not too long ago, championship revenge tour. People forget Buffalo was in this same spot in 2019 and lost to Calgary. Yep. With a lot of these same guys. So I wouldn't, yeah, I, I, I'm going to go Buffalo game one. I think, I think they started off the right way, but game two is going to be interesting. I had a lot just flowing through my mind right now. Number one, do you think Chaos is going out to watch this game? After their, because they play the early game on Saturday. That would be bonkers. 
but if there's if there's a watch party hypothetically they could make it they might go like mm. go well <laughs> funny you should say that because i googled to see how far yeah that's it was I... just a, it's four hours away <laughs> But, like, with them playing the early game, that game starting at 7.30. 2.15, and then, you know, the game goes, what, two hours typically? Because of 48 minutes and then halftime mm-hmm. and then timeouts and everything and stuff like that. You're probably no, thinking they're yeah, not going to go. But, I mean, I'm down But if they're having party. a watch party. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll pull up. They know we'll pull up. What up, Jack? <laughs> This one's on me this time. Man. We need to find that out. ASAP. ASAP. And then we can go somewhere and try out that hot sauce from Jerry. This pick is for the content. This pick is for my boys. Go in Colorado. Got, I, got, I got to do... This is one of those where... If I would have done that pick fucking earlier in the season, it would have been one game closer because if I would have picked Toronto instead of Buffalo, I'm going to take Colorado just for the the rooting interests, keeping it even. Uh, I just like the way they're playing right now. I think I think it also helps a little bit that they played last weekend. They get a little momentum where Buffalo's been off. Not saying that's a bad thing, but I think for Colorado it's a benefit for them to just – keep their legs moving and not losing momentum where Buffalo it doesn't really affect them one way or another just because they're so talented. Or does it? I, I might argue that a fully rested, basically bi week bandits might be the scariest thing on the planet. Oh yeah, I'm saying like it it doesn't really hurt them for being off. It definitely doesn't Buffalo. hurt them. I think it might I honestly think it might help them. And I think it helps Colorado that they've just been playing and getting reps without Ryan Lee and yeah, being able yeah, to kind of keep their winning think, momentum going. I like, think that's the big thing there is the reps without Ryan. Because there's always those those scenarios where it's like, oh, you know, do you want to have the week off? Do you want to keep playing? And, like, I think for some teams it helps to have that week off and some teams it helps to keep playing. And I think both of these teams for the scenarios they're in, it helps them. So I think this is going to be like a fucking heavyweight title match. I think the series goes three. It, it's gonna be nuts. I'm just intrigued to see like who does it help more. Like, is it yeah. a bigger boost for Buffalo to have that time off? Like, not that any of their guys are really old and like right. need that time, but like maybe Matt Vince. But yeah, like most of these guys, looking at their roster, most of these guys had a month. Yeah, really, like two three weeks really in between playing and then having to go to training camp. Like, their bodies have to be tired. Like, yeah, this week is probably pretty Huge. well needed like then you look at the flip side colorado definitely didn't need that week if they swept i think we're talking about buffalo sweeping in two yeah and pol long island weekend being bananas the return <laughs> of just the, the literally that they should just title that the return like that that'll is- be the title episode of baltimore week for us <laughs> yes yes because I'm interested what those matchups are for the team because Water Dogs are obviously affected by this matchup. Uh, Whip Snakes are are affected, and uh, Chaos and Archers are affected yep. the most. So I mean, Chaos have a matchup with Water Dogs. <laughs> Dylan Ward's gonna be like, "Hey guys, long time no see." <laughs> but if it is Long Island, like. And chaos come back on ABC. Jesus. It's not good for us. Not at all. <laughs> or is it? Nah. Nah. If they come back that game on ABC. Oh, as, the championship. As much as I'm a Woods fan, I'm definitely smashing chaos. Smash. Off the championship chaos. coming back as the defending champs. Game one. It's going to be that. So the champ is here. Game one. Is, game one's a 19-4 blowout. <laughs> just running it. Well, uh, that's the best question you could ask. Uh, it just poured down rain and their face off guy face off in a tsunami. Deep cut. 
All I could think is <laughs> Lola. American Ninja Warrior. <laughs> this episode is going to be off the rails, but that Dude. is uh, our pick up NLL finals pick em segment. I'm taking the man. DJ's taking the band. It's brought to you by Pickup. Go to playpickup.com. Start playing those headlines. Let's have a good NLL finals. Wrap up a fantastic return to play for the NLL. Uh, but like we said, PLL Albany is here. DJ and I will be there Saturday and Sunday. Um, man, it just feels good knowing that like summer road trips are coming back. If gas prices could go down just a bit, that'd be great. <laughs> Just so I can get a decent prize play Please. <laughs> this one wasn't too bad, honestly. Uh, it wasn't, but yeah, it it'd be nice to knock a few hundred dollars off a plane phew. ticket. We'll be in Albany. Already had some people reach out saying that they're gonna be there. Scotty Royster's gonna be there, which is very hype. What up, Scotty? Um We gotta bring Scott wherever we go, we gotta bring Scotty to the LL finals watch party oh us. yes he's coming through yes um minio alexis bradley they gotta come like whole squad deep we definitely dropped the the ball on adding digs that should have been the first tweet we sent out after san diego lost <laughs> yeah yo how you doing kid <laughs> sorry about your luck you know it'd be crazy is he throw up this sign and, oh, say, and say go Bulls? He would use <laughs> your gif of, of me, yes, and say go Bulls. <laughs> Be like San Diego, who? Go Bulls, baby. I need Redwoods to win by a thousand this weekend. <laughs> we ain't the only ones looking for uh, Shout out, Coach Nat. So many good matchups this weekend. Obviously, Whips Chaos kicks it off. Redwoods Atlas on the worldwide leader. Water Dogs Cannons in a battle of the expansion teams and Chrome Archers. Now, there are some guys that are not going to be available. Obviously, Whips and Chaos across the board. Redwoods, no John Sexton, which sucks big time. Um, and then Archers, the big loss for them is no Grand Amen. That's a bummer. And adding that now, I think the Connor Fields not being there is going yes. to be bigger without Grant. But this is an opportunity with that matchup. We'll, we'll go reverse order. We'll start on Sunday, 345 matchup, Chrome Archers. This is a huge opportunity for Matt Moore to step up in his first game as a pro and really like showcase his talents because I think Chris Bates is going to use him a lot with both of those guys being out you're going to have to rely on somebody with that skill set and that talent to go alongside, you know, the bunk bed boys. I think we're going to see a lot of Ryan Ambler on Sunday and then obviously Tom Schreiber as well. But I think this is a big game for Matt Moore. Now the question is, where does Matt Moore play? Right. I'm going to go out on a crazy limb here. No one's going to agree with me. Everyone's going to look at me like I'm dumb and please tweet at me, at me in the discord, at me in the Twitter communities, wherever you want to at me, but I absolutely a thousand percent believe Tom Schreiber should go play down low with Marcus Holman and Will Manny. And they should leave Matt Moore up top. Having that attack background. Matt Moore just gained a lot of points in my book. Oh, yeah. I mean, I love Matt Moore already watching. Just seeing his bird. number right what? here. <laughs> I ain't going to pay attention to that part. <laughs> I ain't going to pay attention. I ain't worried about that part. I'm looking back and when he was rocking that good old number five, which he can't wear here, right in Virginia in the same colors. Ironically, he looked phenomenal. He's gonna look smooth in the eleven. And that's 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 good points in, in our book here for me, Matt Moore. Not so. our book, his book. Make our that, book being the clear. the eleven club. You got you got points in my book for just being a good lacrosse player because you're unreal. He already had those. <laughs> Dude's unreal. He just got like, bonus points. His, his It's like when you hit double jeopardy. <laughs> Big bucks, double whammy. No whammies. Stop. Double whammy. You win a car. <laughs> That's a double whammy. Literally a double whammy. <laughs> No more, no more sticks. I'm For calling, me, I'm that's, like, that double that's like Wheel of Fortune when it's like bankrupt, bankrupt, and then the million. He hit the million slot. <laughs> he hit that bankrupt twice. <laughs> he hit both sides of the bankrupt. That's a double whammy right there. But I, I mean, I love him up top playing in that midfield. 
that's what the difference for Virginia this year versus or these past two years versus the years before, in my opinion, was Matt Moore playing at X versus playing that midfield role yeah. he played. He opened up their offense so much from up top at that midfield role. Doing that doesn't take anything away from your mid your midfield, and it doesn't take anything away from Tom Schreiber. Right. Because now, who do you ask your best pole to defend? Down low. Do you ask him to defend Marcus Holman, or do you ask him to defend Tom Schreiber? Mm. And if you do ask him to defend Tom Schreiber, how does he defend Tom Schreiber? Yeah. And now you're asking your best pole up top to decide between, you know, uh, Matt Moore and uh, who's the other one I'm thinking of? Yeah, I pulled those guys. <laughs> Trey LeClaire's on that Trey list. Trey will be I back. Mean, Ryan Ambler. Ryan Oghaven is going to be huge in their offense. Like, I like the – you brought up the young guys. Young guys are going to be big in this, but I think Matt Moore is the biggest. Like, You, you know who else, who else is also going to be big? Either Will Jones or Jackson Place because I totally forgot Warren Jeffries out. He's with Colorado. Yep. It's going to be – I think Jackson Place gets the nod. Also, did Scott Ratliff change his number? No. He wore number two. Yes, he did change his number. He did. <laughs> that's, that's like mind-fucking me right now, looking at that. I don't like that. Why? I hope that's just an error on the website. Why? I hope that's just an error. Why? <laughs> Who's coming in? Nobody. Plus, he's got veteran status. I, I hope there's, it's just an input error. There's got to be a reason. Yeah. I don't think so, though. That's so weird. That's so weird. I hate that they have Connor DeSimone as well. <laughs> I hate that. Why do you hate it? It's it, Why did they need him? They have Connor Fields. They have Ryan Ambler. They have Ryan Alghaven. All four of them are the same player. I think that's a... Connor Fields replace fill in. Yeah, but I mean, he's going to stay. I guarantee it. I think even when Connor gets back, he's going to stay, and they have four players that are the exact same. Those two trade bait. Those mid, uh, mid lineups are going to be crazy because they're going to end up running two man game. And it's going to be Ryan and Connor Fields, and then Connor D. Simone and Augaven. And that's good. With the, what they have down low, even if Amen doesn't come back. That's also probably why he's there, too. Yeah. So he'll be around. Archers are going to be interesting with some of these guys missing, but also, like, you know, this is like I said last week, this is a big year for them. And they, they really got to take advantage of a lot of matchups, this one included. But let's talk about the beauties, my, my league pass squad. I'm down with these guys. <laughs> I'm down with these you see guys. Seeing the vision. <laughs> it ain't even about the vision. It ain't even about the vision. <laughs> I'm just I'm, we got I'm some we got that. some number updates here too. We'll start with that. Brandon Nick turn wearing number twenty. That's a criminally underused number. I feel like in lacrosse. Yes, and it doesn't surprise me. I don't hate it because he wore something wild at Army too. Yeah, I don't hate that. It was like he wore like thirty-seven or something. he wore something. Twenty wild. is an upgrade over thirty-seven. He wore something wild. Logan's wearing 12. Love that. Love that. Before I wore 23, 12 was my It would have been a power move if he wore number one. He should have. Does anybody have that? No. That would have yes. been. Oh, yeah, JT. Okay. I'm fine with that. But why is JT not wearing two? Uh, Colin Heacock. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> totally forgot about that guy. Not him necessarily. I just forgot he was wearing two. Yeah. That would have been a power move though. But I'm fine with JT wearing one is fucking. Beautiful. Oh, I love it. That's beautiful. And can we please hurry up and get Nick Grill in a chrome jersey? Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Any other number updates of note? don't think so so we got chrome i'm super excited for them um love the captains perfect you know handing over of the mantle to john Rannigan and jordan mcintosh from 
you know, Joel White and the Dolphin Boy, <laughs> John Galloway. Um, I'm just excited to watch this team play. Like, adding Logan and Brendan to Jackson Morrill, Dylan Malloy, Colin Heacock, Brendan Cavanaugh, who's been getting a lot of running camp from all the tweets from Keegs I've seen. And I always forget how small he is. But I like it. It's like their version of Ryder. So it works. Their midfield is the thing that I'm going to really be paying attention to. Because obviously you have Jordan, you have John Rannigan, Justin Anderson, Kevin Rogers, Mike Messenger on this team. From Saskatchewan Rush. I really, really like that. A lot. I think he's going to fit in really well, especially with Jordan and John who both play NLL and have that box background. That excites me if you're running those three at the same time because then you kind of have a way to combat any sort of box offensive looks and then be able to really throw a box look you know, when they're running down on offense. Yeah, and I mean, I like Mike going in on, on D as well with yes. Ryan Tarafenko. Like, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Give me that every single time. Mike is tough, aggressive, going to play great short stick D. And then when it gets out in transition, you know, if he's got it, he can give it off to Ryan, vice versa. Like, I really like what they're doing. Th- this entire team, what they're doing as a team is fantastic. Like, uh, Besides cutting Randy Stotts. Which... Yeah, but I'm really, like you said, I'm really excited to see this team. Um my thing, I think this is team to watch this year. Like, yeah. And, and as crazy as this sounds, they kind of have the most to, like, fail on this mm-hmm. year, in my this, opinion. This like, is a, as weird as it sounds, this is like a free play year for Chrome. Yeah, because this is the best team they've put out ever. As long as they and stay granted, healthy. It's only been three stay years. Stay healthy. It's only been three years, but also, this is by far. James Barclay, buddy, pal, how are you? Love you. I've been, I've been a... Avid supporter of Chrome. Avid supporter of the Halifax Thunderbirds. Did you know James Barclay unfollowed OTB today? No way. Very disappointed. Very sad. Don't know what happened. Don't know if he got hacked. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to say that. I'm going to say he got hacked. We I, we had to reciprocate because I was very disappointed to, to come across that news. But... We can fix it this weekend, James. Uh, Jesse Bernhardt obviously back, which is very big for this team. JT making his pro debut. I'm so excited. Uh, Mike Manley's back from injury. I think that's huge for their like just defensive like leadership portion of this team. Um, I think Nick Grill's going to get burned, which is exciting. You know, they not that they're weak defensively like they just don't have a lot of depth as opposed to other teams and I think that's going to be the one spot on this team that will be looking for the most like trying to find cohesive chemistry because they haven't played together so that's going to be the biggest part of this team is that from the back up where you know you haven't had Sean Scannoni playing with your LSMs or your defense pretty much at all like Barclay and Mike Manley were the only two defenders on this team last year consistently. Um, so there's going to be a lot of, I think, learning curves there. But offensively, I think it's there. Like Top, you're good. The back end is where there might be some growing pains early on until some chemistry starts flowing cohesively with this unit, and that's just a matter of just getting reps together. Not playing devil's advocate here, but I might completely oppose you and say that I think defense may end up being their strong point. Um, just pointing out my team this year, our offense is a thousand times better than my defense. Mm-hmm. But my defense was one, playing a lot more. Right. And two, they kind of understood if we play bad, we are screwed. Like we, we have to play bad. And I think K, or Chrome is very much in that same scenario. They're going to be playing a lot of defense. They're going to be in some bad scenarios. But the worse the defense plays, the worse they're going to like. The worse the games are going to be. It's so like they're going to have that in the back of their minds. They're going to be playing a little harder. But also, every like you said, everybody's fighting for a spot. So everybody's trying to play their best. No, there's no solidified spots in the defense. Yeah. Look at the offense. Offense is almost solidified. But my problem is there are so many mouths to feed and so many in new newcomers that are just as good as the guys that are already there. Who gets PT? 
where do they play how much do they play who's more effective how do you make these decisions i think the benefit for their offense though is for like the second from like long island on you had the the four who are returning of hecock cav dylan malloy and jackson moreau playing together and now you're just adding two more talented weapons in logan and nick turn into the mix so you can kind of finally have some switchability and you know run different guys together but i think having those four up top having played together for a majority of last season is big and then the entire midfield is back like and you just add Mike Messenger to the mix, which is exciting. And then their D-mids are pretty much the same. You know, you have Will Hoss, you have Ryan Terrafanko, who are, like, clones of one another. And then, not that I think the defense is going to be bad. I think it's it's a lot of good individuals. It's just a matter of, let's see them blend. Like, we saw their offense kind of start to do last year, just on a defensive side of things. Um, and, you know, as talented as he is, we'll see how JT acclimates to the pro game. Like... He hasn't played since – it's been over a year since he's last played lacrosse. So, I'm excited – like, I'm super excited to watch this team. And I'm very excited that Eli Salama won the LSM battle. Yeah. I mean, I, I kind of felt like he would. Yeah. Um, he was phenomenal for them in that position last year. Played very well. Um, but it, the offense just – it scares me because there's – already looking at attack, they've already talked about sliding Heacock up top. He didn't really play well up there. How does that affect him? How does that affect everyone else? Because being Colin Heacock, he's looking at their roster, he's probably the number one guy. 100%. You can't not put the ball in Colin Heacock's stick. So if he's playing bad, what do you do? You move, okay, you move him down low, he starts playing better, but then, you know, that completely throws off Logan or Dylan because you move them up top. Like, there's so many worries about where the. I think that's going to be the key with their offense. It's just watching how Pseudo and company like navigate that use problem. their switchability yeah. and like how they put that puzzle together. But I I like that the four guys are back. They didn't really take away from them, and then just I think adding those two guys to the mix isn't as drastic as what we're seeing with just them actually piecing a defense together plus a brand new goalie. You know, there's going to be growing pains. I think for. Scannoni just like navigating in front of a defense that hasn't played together. I think that's going to be more pressure on him to really just be on his P's and Q's and, and really step up so that way he doesn't lose playing time to Owen McElroy. Um, Scannoni's also so much younger than I thought he was. He's pretty. <laughs> I young. thought he was like late 20s, but 24. He's young. Yeah. What a time. Oh. I remember when I was 24. <laughs> I ain't even 24 yet. <laughs> uh, we'll get into the the matchup, you know, picking our, our matchup there. We didn't bring up Cole Williams, who might Stud. end up being the best midfielder on that Chrome team. Um, I, that's, that's crazy to say, but he just might be. If he plays even half as good as he's been playing in camp, he's going to be the best midfielder on this team. I'd still put – money on Justin Anderson but I don't hate that statement like I, I'm I, a big ju- I'm a big J.A. Guy. I, I did say might I said might but it, that dude that been... should be the break the breakdown of their midfield though yeah it should be J. Mac Messenger Rannigan Kevin Rogers Justin Anderson Cole Williams okay where does Logan Brendan and Colin fit into that i'm just saying are from they, those are from they that a line grouping. of their own yeah <laughs> that is, that's from the grouping that's listed as midfield okay. on the website like those three should be so like, if those be are the two. three lines how do you number them who's one two and three and why well i shouldn't say why we could go on a tangent about why but who's one two and three uh starting wise like if you're like here's your starting lineup I guarantee Rannigan and Jordan McIntosh are going to start. Um, so sub- subsequently, does Messenger take the face off then? Maybe. Because why not? Right? That wouldn't surprise me. Because he's, he's surpri- taken face offs himself with the rush. So Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, I don't hate that. And they don't necessarily take a f- roster spot with a face off guy. Mm-hmm. They're taking it with a midfielder who can take face off. 
Yeah, I don't hate that. And I mean, Connor needs a little bit of a break here and there. And I mean, he I, needs a little bit of a fire I, lit I, under I, his ass. And I might trust Mike Messenger a little more than Kyle Gallagher. Oh, a hundred percent. No offense, no to Kyle offense Gallagher. To, yeah, he hasn't really shown anything in his little bit of time in the league, and that's you know, no offense, but it just is what it is. Like, yeah, I'm actually really intrigued. They, you're right, league pass team of the year. <laughs> yeah. League pass team of the year. Uh, the 1 p.m. Sunday matchup is a battle of the expansion teams, Water Dogs and Cannons. Um, we're both very high on the dogs. We're both very low on Cannons. No offense to Coach Quirk and company, but. Water Dogs, they get Eli Gobrek back, obviously. Sorry to Eli for losing. I also love the power move of the Water Dogs only having one captain. Such a power move. And for it to be Steve and It's Steve is so great. I love Steve. There's like no knock on Steve, but it's like you look at some of the other guys on their roster uh, and you're like, okay. Yes. All right, Steve. What you what you really got going? What you on working up there? with? <laughs> what you really doing over there? I actually probably have to pull up the tweeted out roster of Water Dogs because there's a couple guys on their roster who are not playing this year, <laughs> still on their roster. Um, like half the squad. <laughs> I do have to say, shout out to the boy. Recently followed my personal um, Charlie Kitchen. He is uh, one of the coaches on Saint Augustine Prep down here in South Jersey. They just won the state title yesterday. Charlie wins there. Hype for the boys. Shout out to Charlie Kitchen. Um, the Water Dogs are probably league pass team number two for me in terms of just like seeing what they're going to do. Um, I feel like they have so much potential to be that one seed again just with the talent they have. So this is their roster. Uh, Ryan Brown, Liam Burns, Ryan Conrad, Zach Currier, Matt DeLuca, Steve DiNapoli, Eli Gobrek, Jack Hanna, Jake Higgins, Matt Hosick, Connor Kelly, Charlie Kitchen, Christian Mazzone, Kira McArdle, Ben Randall. Uh, remember, Ben Randall shouldn't be on a roster. Uh, Rylan Reese, Chris Sabia, Christian Scarpella, Mikey Schlosser, uh, Michael Sowers, Jacob Stover, Zach Tucci, Ethan Walker, Matt Witcher, and Jake Withers. Really solid roster. I forget who... I mean, they cut Reed Bowering, which you and I were very bummed about. This was uh, Mitch Jones. <laughs> yeah, Mitch was a little more than bummed about it. <laughs> um, Bro was animated, to say the least. Beyond animated. <laughs> I don't know where their player pool releases are. I think it's right above this one. Here we go. Uh, Jason Reynolds, Reed Bowering, Noah Rack, and Harrison Bardwell have been released to the player pool. So Reed, really, the only name of note, no offense to the other guys, but like Reed's name stands out there, obviously. Um, but not too much like notoriety names cut from this team in terms of guys who were there last year. Um, I just like their roster. <laughs> They're a really solid team. Yeah, I love their roster. I mean, they they are extremely solid. Um, couldn't be more excited about this first couple of weeks. Arguably Strict. second best defense or, like, defense 1A in my book behind Redwoods and – So really three? Defense three, because you got one in one A or one A and one B with Woods and Whips. If we're just talking like removing LSM from the conversation and like D middies, you can make the argument you would take Water Dogs defense. You can make. I think you can make that argument. Not saying it's right or wrong, but I feel like the argument can be made that Liam Burns, Eli Gobrek, Ben Randall, Chris Sabia I mean, has yeah. the potential to be as good as that Whip Snakes defense. I think the, the like we were talking with face off, like that elite level is with it's those three. That's the yeah. elite level of defenses, and then everybody else falls in subcategories below that. Like 
those are easily the top three defenses in the league and are pretty much interchangeable. I think the one I have my gripe, my you know, I have my rip, my rife with the one person that I believe out of these three teams that probably doesn't fit in with the rest. Not going to say his name. You know exactly who I'm talking about. <laughs> and uh, our faithful definitely know who I'm talking about too. Um, but yeah, other than that one person, I feel like everyone on that list is interchangeable, no matter the team. Like very, very solid defensively. A uh, big part of the reason why I think the Dogs were the two seed last year. One seed. They were the one. Yeah. That's right. Atlas ended up being the two. Because of score differential. Big part. I mean, there it is. Score differential. You got a good goalie and and good defense. You're probably going to win the score differential battle. And I think having Jake Withers and like basically Team Canada without Brody Merrill on this team, it's such a benefit for them to have like that unit there. Um, it's going to be interesting. I'm I'm pumped for Matt DeLuca to get a lot of playing time while Dylan Ward's playing in the NLL Finals. Um, I know you're even more hyped. It's, it's just his Woods tryout. It's literally just his Woods tryout. You're so disrespectful to think <laughs> Gup. I'm not. Gup can have his time. Um, and I and I absolutely love Jack Kelly, but like we can all kind of see the kind of the end of his career coming soon. And it's not because he's not good enough, but like he's just not playing. Most guys. Or he's going to end up on an expansion team next year. There's that, too. If he ends up on an expansion team, I will be the first to celebrate, and I'll probably grab a jersey, TBH. But at the same time, he you know, he could end up sticking with the woods and in, like, two years calls it quits because he's just not playing. And, like, as a backup goalie, how often? Like, how much are you yeah. really going to come and, you know, fly out every weekend to sit the bench? You know, like, eventually he's going to be like, all right, I got other things in my life I can do. I- and and Matt DeLuca is very similar mm-hmm. to Timmy T. You're not changing really much style. Except he's a little bit taller. That's it. He's got a few inches on him. But, like, <laughs> as far as the defense, you're getting pretty much the same goalie. Nothing really has to change. He just has to warm up to the new defense. Matt like, DeLuca is starting small forward in the NBA. <laughs> I do have one concern with the Water Dogs. They had a Q&A with Michael Sowers on the Premier Lacrosse League official Twitter today. Michael Sowers did not respond to our tweet asking if he was an advanced stat nerd or if he's got that dog in him. (laughs) Look at him. What do you think? I personally am of the ilk that Michael Sowers has that dog in him. I just wanted him to confirm it, but we didn't get a response. Like, like, let's look at this, right? Ryan Brown, Kieran McArdle. Ben Reeves and Michael Sowers are the attack we have pictures from on the website. Right. Two of them look like they got dog, and the other two look like analysts. I think three of the four have that dog in them. I'm going based purely off looks, right? Yeah. If I just looked at Ryan Brown and Kieran McArdle, I would think that they're analysts. And they think See, I think Kieran's picture, he looked like his eyes, his eyes got that dog in him. Look at the dudes. Ben Reeves and Michael Sowers are staring through your entire soul. Kieran's looking through your soul. <laughs> Kieran's also a teacher. He got that dog in him. <laughs> yeah, facts. You got it. You got a solid point there. Uh, removing Bennett because he's on the holdout list this year. Mm-hmm. Do we see more Connor Kelly playing attack? Rather than midfield this year. No. I think there's an opportunity for it. And I say that because I think Jack Hanna might be a smidget better for that role in this purpose. I think leaving Connor Kelly up top as your like go to midfielder is the best option for you. I'm not saying like full blown, but I think we could see more of it than we have. I think yeah, I think we, I think we might see some spots of it, but I I honestly think taking him out of that midfield like completely diminishes it. Because you have Ryan Conrad, you have Zach Courier, Jack Hanna, Connor Kelly, Christian Mazone, Scarpello, Schlosser, Ethan Walker. We may see Walker slide down before anyone else. Yeah, I completely forgot they had him, but like Walker will probably we'll be talk the about one. somebody who got that dog in him. Yeah, Walker will probably be the one to slide down. Not only you know playing attack at Denver. But also his NLL time with Georgia. Georgia. 
You, you think I, Mikey could? No. Mikey is staying mid. He's got too much of a Zach Curry or like play style. They could definitely slide him back to play some D. He's got, got a nice ground ball game and they, they won't move him down there. Maybe Christian Mazzone might get some time down there as well. If he gets some time. If he can see with the way his helmet's tilted. <laughs> <laughs> There's a difference between <laughs> tilt drip and, and just that. See, that's how much tilt he's got. Helmet's falling off. Alright guys, welcome back. Meanwhile, I'm, uh, I'm in my Mazone. Pull out a good pull out a good Drenner tilt for y'all. Shout out the, the Don't let me get in my zone. <laughs> Shout out the tilt god drenner. <laughs> Did you see him in the vlog? RJ was like, what are you doing? Signing your life away? Pretty much. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Oh. <laughs> it is just about. Oh, we, you want to play for us? You can't play for nobody else. <laughs> you better ask Nick Grill about that. <laughs> we are very high on this water dog squad. Um there's a lot to be excited about with them if you're a dogs fan. Um, and it looks like just from scrolling their Twitter, uh, team owners are in town this weekend. So that should be a doozy. Um, yeah, so they'll be at the game. So See how hard be... he just snatched at that ball, trying to catch it off the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Young fans snatching at the ball does nothing but ruin your sidewall. Whew. Football players, am I right? The man. <laughs> Uh, let's look at their opponent, the Cannons. A lot of just turning turnover. We got a jersey update for a new acquisition. Jake for cars are number ten. Formerly number fifty four with chaos. <laughs> what a what a <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. We'll we'll report back once we see it in person. <laughs> Um, there's a lot they, to just like decompress yeah, with this team. They loaded up on offense for sure, which you and I both said, we don't know if we really like agreed with that full blown, knowing how we felt about their defense last mm-hmm. year. Mm-hmm. Um, and not that their defense is bad. It's just, we thought it needed more depth, which you had Scott Hooper, you had Brian McIntosh. You have Jack Kilty, Holden Garland, Brody Merrill, Jake Pulver all coming back. But your offense was super solid last year. Like, having Drenner, Shane Jackson, Lyle Thompson, that was what we felt like the best running offense they had last year. You added Ryan Tierney in trade. You drafted Asher Nolting. You added Christian Cuccinello last year, like halfway through. Um, you have Adam Charlotte Beats coming in. Brendan Bomberry. I don't know if he's playing or not. Like he's supposed to play MSL, but MSL is delayed because of a ton of reasons. Brendan Bomberry's got a number on the website too, which I think is an indication that he's gonna be playing. Which is exciting because you have a Georgia Swarm attack line that you can run with Lyle, Shane Jackson, and Brennan Bomberry. It's just a lot of guys on this roster, and I don't know. Let me pull up Cannon's uh, official 25-man roster. Is it Tierney on that? Tierney's on their roster. Let's see. No, so, isn't Tierney on that Georgia team as well? I don't think so. I could be wrong, though. So the guys that made it, so the attack, the guys that they're listing at attack, I should say, which is very interesting as well. Christian Cuccinello, Shane Jackson, John Piatelli, Stephen Reefus listed at attack, Lyle Thompson. Midfield, Brendan Bomberry, Adam Charlene Beads, Drenner, which is very interesting, (laughs) Fricaro, Asher Nolting, Nate Solomon, Ryan Tierney. Let's just decompress that because that's the biggest, like, additions and everything. Drenner being listed at midfield makes zero sense to me. It makes a ton of sense to me. Simply because, like, he played so well on the wing last year. Yeah, but looking at who they have listed at attack, 
We know Lyle and Shane are going to start. I'm just saying flip-flop Drenner and Reefus because we saw Reefus run out of the midfield last year when obviously Paul was there, but I felt like that's where Steven shined the most in terms of like nobody was like giving him any attention so he could just go. But now what I think they were worried about is him getting all the attention. Slide him down at attack. Teams are normally a little slower to slide to their D guys. They leave them out on islands a lot. That's arguably a better matchup. Getting Drenner on a short stick at any time is a goal 98% of the time. And he can still take that pole from up top. I kind of think it flexes the offense more. And Reefus and Piatelli have much more similar game styles than Drenner does to either one of them. So I think that might be why is more of when they go for that change because one of them isn't working or, you know, whatever the case may be. It's a lot more similar between Piatelli and Reefus than it would be between Drenner and one of the two. I, there's just so many reasons why they could have done this. Can I also just say I personally don't feel like Ryan Drenner fits this team. Then what team does he fit? Like. Because I love him on this team. I feel like he's always just so, like, lost in the shuffle. Because, obviously, it's Lyle's team, which makes a ton of sense. But, like, I don't know. I feel like Drenner... I feel like he caught a, a very shitty hand with the Water Dogs. And that sucked, because I thought, like, he could have been, like, the face of that team. Um, I mean, if... I don't know. It's just one of those weird things where it's like, damn, like he's he's moved from team to team a ton. Like he's this is his third team since the league started. This is the second year he's been on a team consecutively, which is good for him, I'm sure. But there's just so many mouths to feed on this attack and midfield grouping that I just don't know how it's all gonna mesh. This is going to be wild when Reefus, Jackson, and Lyle step out at attack and their first midline line when they go on offense for the first time is Drenner, Bomberry, and Asher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and or <laughs> Adam Charlotte Peace. Or, I mean, even Jake Farraka or Ryan Tierney. Like, you can put out six guys and – you're legitimately asking two short sticks to play defense on a guy they cannot play defense on. The offense is in, like, it's in great shape. It's, it's the defense that is in fact the problem. Like, and keeping three face off guys for your 25 man roster. And I know Cannon struggled. Five, yes. I know Cannon struggled last year, but man, not being able to, really make a determination of which two guys played the best in camp is oof yikes <laughs> yeah yeah I think they put too much on their goalies yeah I think they put too much on their goalies the offense is you know loaded and they do fine because I mean they put up plenty of goals last year they, they weren't hurting mm -hmm. for points but you're asking Nick Morocco and or Colin Curse to make a lot of saves this year. That that's tough. Gonna tough. That's gonna be tough. Um, that's gonna be an interesting matchup, to say the least, which we'll get into in a little bit. Let's go to the game that's on the worldwide leader, Redwoods Atlas. Come on, come on, team's loaded. Redwoods are loaded. Um, is Timmy changing his number? I don't know. There's some guys that are like listed on each team's website that have been there and then like their number's not there. So I don't know if they're still just like inputting them, but I feel like Timmy's sticking with zero, which I love. That'd be wild if he popped out. With a I number. don't like that. <laughs> That's got to be wrong. That's got to be so wrong. But then again, it might not be. I don't like that. Because he wore some stupid number in college, too. Like, that is so bad for the Jersey analytics. He wore, like, 66 or something. Like <sighs> no. 
No, what did he wear? 36? So I think he wore 36. That's so bad. I'm almost positive he wore 36. Which, like, isn't that terrible? Like, Finn Sullivan pulls 36 off. But so does 60? Zed. So does that. Yeah. Zed makes, 36 is an okay Zed number. makes 36 look fire. It's not, it's not <laughs> the best. It's an awful number, in it's, my opinion. But who wears there are some who, guys. Who wears 36 in any sport? Brian Westbrook pulled it off. Okay, yes. I'll give you that. There's some like we got like it's Z- a certain type of player. We got Zed and Brian Westbrook. That's that's about and it. And Finn Sullivan. I'll give I Finn mean, Sullivan that credit. I like Finn. So he, yeah. He just needs to change his shoes up. <laughs> the shoe sock game needs I to be mean, switched up. But it's better than the feet of some other guys. We'll talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna leave him alone now. But man, that's not great for the jersey and the likes of Arden Cud. We're talking about Arden Code, everybody. Yo, did our, you, our pride and joy wearing number 60. Did you just see what number that guy's wearing? Oh, yeah. Fire. Yeah, Nikai Montgomery's wearing number one. Fire. But now my question is, what does DeMeo wear? He wore 16 at Maryland. Yeah. Thirty-two, double it up. Do we have a thirty-two? I don't think so. I don't hate that. That's what he should have been wearing. <laughs> yeah, that would have been a better number for him. A thunder. Uh, that's that's gonna be a bummer if we walk think, out there. I, I really don't think he's wearing that. I really do think that's a input error. Oh God, I hope so. That would be so bad. That would be, be so bad. That would be awful. I also want to know what number Joe Robertson is going to wear. Yes. His number is available as far as I know. He what wore eight, he wear? eight. Eight at Duke, yeah. That's what Arden should have been wearing, and, too. And, and, <laughs> unless Nat retired it in honor of Kobe. Wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I mean, you could wear eight, but you ever heard of Kobe, bro? Nah. <laughs> you ain't him. <laughs> you ain't That's the him. number that. Uh, Arden Cohen should have been wearing. He should have to fight Ryan Hallenbeck <laughs> in a duel with lacrosse sticks, like fucking medieval times. Okay, so now do you give Ryan Hallenbeck a pole or do you give Arden Cohen a short stick? It has to be fair, yes? I just give Arden Cohen number 24. <laughs> we call it a day. <laughs> But I mean, that would have been fantastic for, for the, the Jersey sa- analytics. For the sake of content, if they're going to fight, like, I would assume we give Arden a short stick. It's got to just be fencing with fucking lacrosse sticks. Right, but, like, it, it's got to be fair. It, it, like, right now, it's Arden with a pole against Ryan with a short stick. And we want Arden to win, okay? <laughs> Awful. <laughs> I'm trying to be the nice guy here, make things all fair. You're Ryan, not. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There's other cool numbers for you out there, yes. Ryan. You can take 12. We don't have a 12. <sighs> anyway. <laughs> well, if he's wearing 24, what is he wearing? And by he, Clark Peterson. Did is we- he going to go back to 45? Well, isn't he's on the pup list? So I don't know what he's gonna wear. But Ryan Lee was forty five, so I don't know. I don't know if like him being on the pup list affects that. I don't think Ryan Lee's gonna play this year. Yeah, I doubt it. So I think maybe that affects it for just this year. Because I mean, I I mean, I'd be fine with that. Clark looked fine in forty five. After after seeing the jersey reveals, and I not necessarily impressed or not impressed, but they kind of just you know slapped a champion logo on the old stuff. Like I would assume that champion year, logo looks dope. Yes, for everybody out there, just said like the reason I said it looked dope, and for whatever fucking reason got eviscerated on Twitter. Fuck all of you. Um, it's like that gel looking like puffed up material and i think that's fucking sick like the adidas one who's stitched this looks cool i'm a fan yeah i mean i like it i'm i'm not opposed to the champion it's logo, so big you can see it from outer space that's the point <laughs> yeah you fucking idiot it's called a brand deal hello they get don't, with the times they don't you know 
make all this stuff for free. I'm it. also on the Redwoods official Twitter account. They did a Q&A with Isaiah Davis out, and someone said, could you take a hit from at Mike Tyson? <laughs> Quote, it depends on how much you're paying me. I'd take it, but I don't know if I would be awake after. <laughs> all time tweet. <laughs> We've talked about this Redwoods team a ton, obviously, because it's our squad. Very excited. The only concern we have is that Kyle Hartzell's the only LSM. But like I said, I think Ryan Kennedy's going to slide up and play some yeah. there. Um, and it, it's not that like we think Hartzell's bad. It's just, one, he's older. Two, to only have one guy listed at a certain position when you need depth across the board at every position in this league is just like, huh, what's the what's the catch here? Um, Drew Simino gets the, the back of faceoff spot as well, which I liked. He played well in the playoffs. Um, but also I think the, the one LSM thing might be to leave a spot for John, John Sexton, Sexton, who is expected to make a return once his injury heals yeah. up. So it's not, it may not necessarily be a, who gets cut one for LSM Sexton. Thing. Um, Might just be a performance based thing. It's gonna be a midi. Yeah. And it might be a demon. Might be Hallenbeck. Or Jack Dolan. Dolan didn't make the Oh he didn't make it. Who did we I kept Hallenbeck here we go. Here and Davis Allen. Okay. I think how and back might get cut just because yeah. you can run a surge or a miles. Yeah. Bertrand, maybe someone out in the Kai at D mid and give him an old mid run right after kind of thing. But I don't think you want to take out a D guy to replace with a D guy. Yeah. And also, I mean, we might see Arden play some LSM early in the year too. True. I mean, the guy's good. He's fast. He can move. Playing Atlas. You've been impressed by them. I haven't really been able to tap in too much to the the training camp stuff. More than impressed. uh, Some Jersey analytics updates. Chris Gray in 24. Sensational. Um, Not surprised for Brennan Curry. Brennan Curry in 16. Not a surprise at all. Any updates? Max Wayne hasn't gotten a number yet. Mm -hmm. Neither has Kobe Smith. Which we've been led to believe Kobe's wearing number zero. Oh wait, yes, yes, we do know that. Sorry. So that is that is not a lead. That is a fact. He said that himself in a blog, PLA yeah. blog. He was like, I'm wearing number zero. And I was like, oh okay. Cool. Okay. We like that. <laughs> yeah. Steez. He's gonna he's actually gonna look icy in in the zero. Yes. Big fan of that. Um just not a fan that he's on Atlas because He's a stud. Like, can we get him in that purple jersey with a zero with the, the baby blue helmet? Can we just know when they're wearing those jerseys, please? <laughs> like, they're, they're honestly, they have a great colorway to kind of mash it. Go light blue helmet, purple jersey, white shorts. Gas. It would be sick with cream shorts, though. be sick with cream shorts. Yes. Um. Yeah, I mean, this roster's loaded with 10. Like, this is the roster we say, like, all the time, they just add talent to it, no matter what position they are. Their attack that they've been running typically has been Eric Law with Jeff T and Chris Gray on the wings, which is... That's some fucking Madden creative team shit. <laughs> but this is going to be a fun matchup. Yeah, the, the, the wildest thing in my mind is that things are, could go completely south and they decide to flip Jake Carraway and Jeff T and run Jeff T out of the midfield and that is so scary and they still have Dan Bucaro behind them there is not an LSM in this league that can guard Jeff T no and there's definitely not a short stick who can do so no <laughs> like and this then roster, like waiting in the wings behind those three is Jake Carraway and Dan Bucaro yeah this roster is scary scary yeah like their midfield if they wanted to they could just go caraway bugaro and romar 
if they wanted to. Like, they have that ability to do that. Not saying they will. But that's stupid. And they also have Doc Aiken just chilling playing midfield, where on almost any other team he'd be playing attack. Dude. <laughs> Could you imagine, like, Romar, Brian, and Jeff with with Jake, Chris, and Eric down low? Yikes. Anyway. <laughs> like there, <there's... laughs> but anywho. <laughs> Low key, Dark Horse for Depoy, Michael Rexroad on oh, that list. I wouldn't even say Dark Horse. I picked I him think, up. I, picked I think him he's up. a favorite. I picked him up this week for fantasy. Yeah, Absolutely. if you guys are not playing Smashed it. Player Royale, uh, challenge us. ASAP. Uh, play everybody. I was like, yeah, dude. I'd... I tried to send... I don't know if it was just like they were updating the app or I tried to send challenges to people or like accept challenges and it like wouldn't load them, hmm. which was annoying, but yeah. hopefully it works. Um, but yeah, no, this <laughs> roll woods. <laughs> I couldn't believe Michael Rex road was a, a tier two. Yeah. That was crazy to me. Dude led, led the league and caused turnovers until week like eight. Yeah. How was he a tier two? You That's know, nuts. like, and because my homie goes, how is Rambo a tier two? I was like, I think it's based off of last year's stats, and like, it makes a mm-hmm. lot of sense for Rambo to be tier two. He missed quite a bit of time, so his numbers were lower because he had the hand injury. And I'm gonna tell y'all right now, I'm gonna be tapping into Rambo as a tier two. Because that's a steal. Because the man's going to pop off at least the first two weeks of the year, if not three, depending on what's going on with Zed. And he'll probably have to keep that going a little bit until Zed gets acclimated. We're talking about Rambo having four, five, six points a game for the first four or five weeks of the season. Like, yeah. If, if you need somebody to pick up an attack for Tier 2 or lower, well, for you know for Tier 2, you, Rambo's definitely a guy to look at. Yep. Uh, and speaking of Rambo, Whips Chaos is the first matchup. It's the last one we're talking about here. Looking at Whips... Um, pretty chalk, I'd say, for who makes their 25 man. Um, just very, very whips. Yeah, very D heavy, which doesn't surprise me. They, they like having the options there. Um, I mean, they're loaded again. They're loaded again. Yep. Um, yep. Didn't didn't expect it. I mean, my biggest question mark with this team is and it's not even a bad question mark is Wheaton Jacko Boys. Yeah. Are they going to play him on some D runs? Is he only going to play offense? Are they going to put him in any kind of scenarios he played in that my- Notre Dame? Like that man on the inside was unreal my question too with zed out for you know at least two weeks would you try gutty up top with rambo and jay carlson at all no i like gutty up at midfield giving them some different looks up there taking that pole i don't because typically rambo's playing outside with zed playing it well at x okay i do I put Justin down just to see if teams will pull Mike Chanacha. Yes. if they, Let him pull him then. Because obviously and, we've seen Gutty in this league thrive playing X. Yeah. Like, he did it in 2019 with Chrome, and then the bubble happened, and then last year Chrome was just in a really weird spot and traded him. Yeah. I think if you can... I would it. try it. At yeah. least, like, what do you what do you have to lose playing Gutty at X and then having Rambo and Jay Carlson in their normal positions? I mean, you don't lose anything. I think you just gain an advantage to have Mike get pulled and pull out the pole, mm-hmm. and get some good short stick matchups with Brad Smith, especially Brian with Cole, Brian Cole being back, Connor Curse, Jack of Boys. Like, those are guys that can definitely you know take a guy off the off the dodge, yeah. especially a short stick if the if the pole is pulled out on Chanita. And then you have Brad Smith, too. And we have Chris Aslanian. I and mean, Chris Aslanian's nice. Yeah. Very nice, honestly. I don't know who's better, him or Pat. <sighs> Whips are loaded. And then... Uh, you see Pat get away with that cross-check to the neck. <laughs> <laughs> I love how everything like that happens. And then Poolski on Twitter is just like, everyone's telling anybody said it, shut up. <laughs> He's 
like, nah. he doesn't think anything's a foul. He's like, nah, that's clean. <laughs> clean. It's so funny. <laughs> we're Not laughing. We're laughing at the team question about which uh, players they wouldn't let date their daughter from chaos. And apparently, Jack Rowlett's hair equals bad boyfriend material. <laughs> That's a fire backpack. Uh, where is your roster? So the I guess you could say piece together chaos roster. Um. There's a lot to look at, and I totally forgot Donville's on this team. God damn. God damn. They're loaded even with <laughs> not all their guys here. I love that for them. Man. Like we brought up a thousand times, like the hardest part is going to be they're not even the hardest part. The most interesting part part of this team is who gets cut when everybody comes back. Yeah, who stays, and is it based off of performance? Is it is it based off this year's performance, or do past performances come in at all? Does past team dynamic come in at all? Like, you know, like there's so many other factors you yeah. could bring in from years past. Having two years already, especially winning a championship last year or three, yeah, two years, three years, three years already. Yeah. And having won a championship, like you can't kind of can't just diss those guys. Like, yep. You got to respect them. So it's like, but if a new guy comes in and outshines them, where does, right. you know, how does that conversation go? Jared Newman, a captain this year. Shout like out to that. the boy. Like that. Uh, Jared Glick and, uh, and Blaze. Um, Jersey analytics for some of the new guys. Zach Getty's wearing number 13. Donville wearing number five. Wasserman getting the 77. Okay. My boy Brett Kennedy getting number 11. Good shit. Welcome to the club. Was Did CJ Cospiel wear number nine all season last year? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. For some reason, I... Oh, no. I'm thinking Troy used to be 77. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Uh, I I like this chaos team even with without all their guys. Um... Solid ass squad. They're gonna they're gonna score even with this team. There's a bunch of guys who have experience um playing either in the PLL or in the MLL. They're gonna they're gonna go. Like as silly as it is, it's like Bryce Wasserman won the last MLL MVP award. So to have that as like a replacement player almost is wild. Yeah. Um Tommy Palasek, like Tommy P, TP eighty four, right? There's some good, there's some good guys out there. Ty Thompson's on this yep. list. Like, Bubba Voigt. Matt Reeves made the list. Like, and this is a good spot for you know the Ryan Smiths and the Tanner Cooks, mm -hmm. Kyle Jackson, where like they're gonna have a lot more time to shine in these opportunities. Mac O'Keefe. This is big for them, in my opinion. Um, but let's get to. Uh, our PLL picks of the week, also brought to you by Pickup. Um, first one, we'll just go in order of you know start time. So Whips Chaos, the replacement champions against the two-time champions. How you see this one going down, Deej? This is the hardest game of the week. Hundred percent. Um, both teams, ironically, are heavily affected. Looking at the West roster, there aren't a lot of pieces missing. But, but with a Zed. name like Zed Williams, and as good as he is, that's a big yeah. piece missing. Um, but I think the real key to who wins this game is defenses and goalies. Mm -hmm. Both of these teams have their full defenses. Both of these teams. Outside of Ian McKay, but like, yeah, you know that's a big drop, but not a not a huge for drop. sure. Um, you know, both these teams have their full defenses and their starting goalies. I believe Chaos's defense and starting goalie is better than Whipsnake's defense and starting goalie, and that's why from I the last time we saw them, we should yes. say yes. Um, I think putting out Jack Rowlett, um, 
Jared Newman. Jared Newman and Brett Kennedy is going to be unreal. Matt Reese. Matt Reese could possibly take that spot. Like, was he there last year? No. So he's bad. Basically, him and Johnny Serdic kind of flip flop. Yep. Yep. So I I like what they have going. I think their defense and goalie will hold it together enough uh, to win. But like I said, Rambo's probably going to pop off because yeah. he's, he's going to have to. Rambo. And he's going to have to. And he likes playing against his former roommate. <laughs> Uh, I I agree with you. I'm taking chaos here. Um, I I like the the biggest thing that's going to determine this game is how well chaos is able to operate off of losing faceoffs because we know no offense to Tommy Kelly or Jerry, they're going to lose faceoffs to Joe. Like Nards is going to win a bunch of these faceoffs. It's just a matter of how can chaos transition out of them and you know. Get a quick defensive shift out to stop this Whip Snakes offense that even without Zed is fully locked and loaded and, and can put up points. Um, that's my biggest thing I'm watching in this game is how well Chaos responds off of losing faceoffs as opposed to, you know, not that you're going into it with a mindset of, oh, we're going to lose them, but on paper, you're more than likely going to lose more faceoffs than you're going to win. So that's my big thing here, but I think Chaos has enough firepower and enough defensive prowess to to win this game. ESPN primetime, 5 p.m., Redwoods, Atlas. Need this to be a rivalry like I need fucking oxygen to breathe. Uh, roll Woods, <laughs> on to the next one. Punch it. No, no questions asked. Bang. You already know what it is. Uh, water Dogs, Cannons, Battle of the Expansion Teams. I think we both agree on this one. Water Dogs. I think this is going to be a very high scoring game. Both offenses have so much talent that are going to put up so many points. And this is no slight at Matt DeLuca either. It's just like you're facing Lyle Thompson, Ryan Drenner. Like there's just so many names that I, that's who I'm watching in this matchup just to see how well he responds to the plethora of talent he's going to be facing. But I think Water Dogs have enough to combat it. I think Water Dogs have the better face-off unit as a whole, not just Jake Withers, whole unit together. Um, and Water Dogs win this one in a high-scoring affair. Yeah, I think it comes down to the defense. I think Water Dogs' defense is going to make a few more plays than the Cannons' defense will, and uh, that's what's going to win them the game. Um, but I do think it's really tough for uh, Matt DeLuca to be stepping in and for this to be his first like real PLL action yeah. is to play Lyle Thompson. Like, he That's got one start tough. in the bubble, and that was it. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, this season was just about made up at that point, so it wasn't like – like, yeah, they were being competitive, but it isn't going to be what you're going to get week one, right. Lyle Thompson. Like, the, we're going to see exactly what Matt DeLuke is made of. And I'll tell you right now, Nat, this man plays well. You better <laughs> sign him. <laughs> uh, Chrome Archers to wrap up the weekend. No Grant, which sucks. But it's league pass team versus team that's on watch this year. Um, th- this is the second tough, like one a toughest, because I think without Grant, there there's a lot of similarities offensively that these teams have the the firepower to go back and forth with. And the face-off thing is tough because it's a rookie against a guy who needs a little kick in the ass. And we love Connor Farrell on the show. Just want to see him back to that 2019 level of performance. I'm going to take... I'm going to take Archers because I like their goalie situation as well as their defense situation in front of Gitz. Not saying that Chrome can't win this game. I just think the chemistry of Archers going into this one helps them a lot. And even though they don't have Warren Jeffrey and don't have Grant, they still put up points in 2019 without Grant Amen on this offense. And I think they can still put up points. Um especially when you have arguably best player on the planet, Tom Schreiber, on your team. So I'm going to go Archers. 
Uh, for me, this one's a little bit easier. Um, it is still tough without Grant and uh, obviously league pass team that I really like with a lot of good players, a lot of young talent being good. Um, but the thing for me is young and old. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't even say old. I'd say veteran, skilled, been here, done that. Like the experience that is on the archers with Tom Schreiber, Will Manny, Marcus Holman, Matt McMahon, Scotty Ratliff, Scotty Ratliff, uh, you know, Gitz, Drew Adams, Dominique Alexander, Dominique Alexander, Treasy, Mark McNeil. Like the the list literally goes on and on. Every single guy, you, you know, pretty much every single guy you name on the roster that isn't a rookie has played yeah. a good amount of professional lacrosse. And like in these scenarios, that matters, especially when you lose your your number one guy. You know, essentially. Grant Amen is the best lacrosse player on this team. Perennial MVP and, candidate. Like. And without him, that, that's a big difference. So to have all that experience of guys that know what to do and to have a guy like Tom Schreiber and or Matt Moore to be the one to fill those shoes of the guy you're missing, you're not really missing too much. So I think archers will be okay. And like you said, Chrome are still kind of trying to find themselves both on offense and defense, kind of just all around looking to get back to who they used to be and Week one against a team like the Archers is tough to try and pull out a win week one when you're still searching for your own identity. So we're on the same page for the PLL picks of the week. We're both going Chaos, Redwoods, Water Dogs, and Archers. And we got our PLL broadcast team. Whole pairings set for this week uh, and as a whole. So congrats to the new uh, PLL broadcast team. Uh, which the play-by-play -play duties this season will be handled by, as the press release says, lacrosse regulars, Anish Shroff, Chris Cotter, Jay Alter, Drew Carter, and Jake Marsh. And then the game analysts include the mainstays of ESPN's college lacrosse coverage, QK, Kark, Ryan Boyle, and Sheehan Stanwick Birch. And then reporters for the 47-game PLL season include familiar faces from across ESPN properties. Katie George, Roddy Jones, Chantel McCabe, and Dana Boyle, along with she and Stan McBurch. Um, so this weekend in the booth on Saturday, we'll have Anish, we'll have Paul, Karkatera, Ryan Boyle, and QK for both games. And then on Sunday, we'll have Chris Cotter, Ryan Boyle, Katie George for both games on Sunday. I'm pumped. And I tweeted this from the OTB account. Goal for this PLL season is to have a niche on pod. That yes. is a number one goal. Him and, and Boyle, honestly. Like, Boyle's been a, since 2019, like, dream. But a niche is key get this season. That's who we want to check off on the box for sure. And obviously, Kark is like a white whale. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're we're we got a couple white whales that we're still trying to yeah. track down, and, and they're looking tough. They're looking tough. But I, I'm not opposed to this. And now that you bring up, you know, getting guys on, I think if we could muscle it a mid-season jamboree with all the coaches after during that break. Uh, yes. After All Star, or is it before? Uh, it's after Minnesota. That would be an before awesome All Star. Time. Yeah, that'd be an awesome time. It's about halfway through the season. How y'all feeling? Yep. <laughs> How y'all feeling? Obviously, like Blaze has been a white whale, which is hilarious because he's right in our backyard. Uh, <laughs> Rambo has been a white whale for the longest time. <laughs> Man, so, yeah. Yeah, I'll do it. Every time. Just give me a call, man. I'll come through. <laughs> Every time. Uh, Miles is definitely a white whale. Miles, Lyle, and obviously PR99. We're going to get some guests this, this PLL season. Don't you worry. Well, we I mean, you, you saw the guests last year. Yeah. You yeah. saw the guests roster last year. Um, is that a white whale? One gazillion percent. <laughs> Man, it's just like that. One gazillion percent, yes. That's crazy. Um, he's he's quiet though. Yeah, he seems like a guy that doesn't really talk. So I guess not as crazy. There's a lot. Like, think about our championship preview pod for the PLL. We had three guests on that show. Bananas. 
had a recurring guest in KJ47. First time, now very good friend of the pod, Ian McKay. And first time, now very good friend of the pod, Jay Carlson. And then follow that up not too long with AT. With AT afterward. We had Nat on going into the playoffs. Or going into Albany, actually. Um, You know, we had... Let's pull it up here. Last year's guest roster, which we could have repeats. Not saying we can't have the same people on again. Because we've had recurring guests on this show a number of times. But last year's guest list was very elite. In yeah. my opinion. Yeah. Um, and we've had a lot of guests on this show, players, coaches, personalities, everything. Um, Got to go all the way back to the PLL season when it started. Got a little bit of weight. Here we go. Um, so we kicked things off with Ryan Tarafanko last year. Uh, Pat Pitts made an appearance on this podcast. <laughs> uh, oh, you. Oh, oh, yeah, me. Yeah, there it is. There it is. Um, I made a visit and never left. Never left. <laughs> Mike Rabel oh, yeah, was on the pod yeah. last season. That's right. Then we had Sarah Griffin was on the pod last year. Bryce Wasserman was on the pod last year. Nat was on the pod last year. Jack Rellette was on the pod last year. Kyle Jackson, Ian McKay, Jay Carlson, Andy Towers. Pretty solid. Yeah. PLL season. And then we had Devin Caney to kick off the NLL season. And we had... uh, um, We had Diggs. Paul and Dan. Paul and Dan. I think that's it so far. The, the, the guest list is brewing in my brain. Don't you guys worry. Don't you guys worry. It's it's cooking in my Slowly brain. Slowly but surely. Who would be your top five this season that you want to get, whether it's new or former? Colin Squire's top five right here. <laughs> Are we are we really doing an improv two top improv five two. right now? <laughs> Just off rip. I think we're both going to niche. Yes, we'll do it as a combo. Uh, Kark. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I also have like a group one that I need. It would be like Jules. Would be K eighteen. Jules would be a uh, Diggs returning Miles. guest. Yeah. Miles Miles Jones is 100% on there. Diggs and, and Nakai. Nakai oh, is 100%. Five, the five of them in room together would be... Can we get a broadcast, please? Yes. 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 Uh, Jake Carraway is on my list. Yes. I love Jake Carraway. Um, his energy is infectious. Um, JT. Jerry Raganese. Mm-hmm. Hello. How are you, pal? Can't wait to see you. Yeah, JT and or Kobe. I mean, yes, JT is a thousand percent on that list. Logan, yes. Grant, Logan Shuss. <laughs> I want Logan yes. Shuss on the pod so bad. Uh, at the same time, the bunk bed boys. Yes, Marcus and Will uh, on the same show together. That's got to happen this year. Don't know when, but and that's got that to me has to be an in person. I could be. I would want to have Marcus and Will together in person, doing that. And that's how I feel about like Blaze and Rambo, doing yeah, Blaze that would and be Rambo fun together and just also. But that that seems ha- like a trio, where you got to put Trevor in there too. Okay, yeah, where it's like the wings meets like kind of the faces of lacrosse, and it would have to be at a time kind of like this, yeah, where we can talk about both NLL and PLL right. legitimately and and get into them about playing each other, playing yeah. with each other in a different It'd have to be like this time of the year or like September. Yeah. Yeah. A yeah. time where we can really get into both and yeah. Love to have Nards back on. Can't go wrong with Nards. I mean, obviously Schreiber, uh, Tom Schreiber, please. Schreiber, Lyle. Uh, I would love to have Zay. Scotty Ratliff back on. He was amazing when he came on in 2019. Tahoka, obviously. Oh yeah, 
that's been a long time coming. There's so many, so yeah. I mean, list we'll be reaching list, out. List could go on and on. Mikey, 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 Mikey. Which we've been trying for since last season. <laughs> I couldn't believe I didn't say a single Michigan uh, the entire time until just now. So stay tuned. The guest list is is being concocted, and uh, when we find out, you'll find out. That's why you got to follow us on the socials at OTB Laxpod, Twitter, Instagram. Follow DJ on Twitter at SCS underscore Next Great. Follow me on Twitter at KBIZZL311. Check out the website, undergroundsportsphiladelphia.com, for all of our written content. Subscribe to the podcast feed on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Leave the five-star ratings and reviews. Subscribe to the Underground Sports Philadelphia YouTube channel. We're going to have vlogs every single PLL weekend that we're at, um, which has started already for Albany. So stay tuned for that. And it's going to be a long one because we got a lot going on this weekend. We'll be at the Phillies game. <laughs> By the time you guys are listening to this, um, and a whole lot of stuff coming from Albany. So subscribe to the YouTube channel, click the like button, hit the bell icon, and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Big thank you to our sponsors, Tomahawk Shades, Kenwood Beer, and Bino Board. Go to TomahawkShades.com, use promo code USP for 25% off your order. Uh, go to KenwoodBeer.com and use the Kenny Tracker to see who's got Kenwood Beer on tap in the Philadelphia area. Got to be 21 or older to do so. And, of course, please drink responsibly. And Bino Board, go to BinoBoard.com and use code BinoUSP for 10% off your order at BinoBoard.com. This has been episode number 224 yeah. of the Outside the Box podcast. We are course allegedly award nominated honorably mentioned viewable on youtube and this one live from underground studios for dj kb hopefully we'll see you in albany but if not we'll catch you guys next week peace peace, peace.